Hi, uh, my name is Lizzie Diamond. I work at Mapbox, and I am going to talk to you about, oh my God, so exciting, projections and datums and web mapping. <laughs> Woo! Hold your applause, please. Um, I was joking with somebody uh, earlier this week that uh, <laughs> Projections and datums aren't that exciting, so I was just going to fill my slides with explosions. Um, and then I found this GIF, so it worked out pretty well. Are you ready to talk about math? Yeah, OK, good. Uh, so this talk is based on a blog post that I wrote. Um, so don't scramble to like write everything down. Uh, also, I'm going to put a link to these slides up as well. Um, so this talk has a few different pieces. First, we're going to do um, a little reintroduction to projections and datums, aka geodesy, um, an overview of the coordinate systems we use in web mapping, um, something you don't no normally see at this conference, an impassioned defense of spherical mercator, um, and a lot of bad doodles by me. Um, so sorry. Um, so this is, this is probably everyone's like not the most favorite part of their geospatial education because it's hard and there's math um, and it's weird and you're like, why doesn't it just work? I tried to project and then I tried to reproject and it doesn't work, why? Um, so maps are tools for communication, I think we would all agree. In the cartography context, we think about it in terms of communicating specific types of information visually on the map. Um, but, the own, but the visual map is only a small part of what the technology actually allows us to do. Um, as you may have heard in talks this week about um, user interfaces and navigation and data analysis. Um, spatial data is used to find places and calculate distances and analyze phenomena. And the visual output is great and important, but underneath it is a bunch of other information that is also important. And without it, we would be lost, literally and figuratively. Um, so in order to communicate about physical locations, we need to have a common system that we can use as a guide. Um, otherwise, I would be like, hey, go down the street and then turn left. But you'd be like, what street and where do I turn left? Um, in our map world, we call these coordinate reference systems. And they determine not only how maps look, but also how data is stored and how we calculate distance. Um, so they're really important. Um, so where do they come from? I'm glad you asked. I'm going to talk all about it. So geodesy is this concept of measuring the Earth. And that's the, where, where we start from when it comes to mapping and map data. Um, doodle number one. Um, so what does the Earth look like? Is it a sphere? No, it's not. Is it a spheroid? No. Is it an ellipsoid? Uh-uh. Is it its own weird, crazy, lumpy shape? Yes, it is. And special thanks to Mike Foster for this lovely rendering of the Earth as a lumpy, weird shape. Um, and ultimately, the real shape of the Earth is too complex to be useful as a reference for measurement. Because um, remember, we're talking about math. The, the underlying um, piece of all of this is, is mathematics. So not only um, is the Earth lumpy, it's also changing all the time, and it has inconsistent density. So it's really hard to model. So we have to make some sort of approximation of it in order to um, use it as a tool for measurement. So what we do instead of using that weird lumpy shape is we use a reference ellipsoid to make an approximate idea of the map surface. Um, and this allows us. Um, to have a mathematically defined surface that roughly matches the model of the Earth when its topographical features are removed. And uh, it work, it's a line of best fit, so it fits better in some places than in others. So yeah, just like in dating, the perfect mathematical ellipsoid does not exist. Um, you have to sometimes just pick the one that's best for the moment, you know, Mr. Right Now instead of Mr. Right. Um, so, in this example here, you can see the, um, the blue here is our sort of most accurate, but still not accurate model of the Earth. Then we can have one ellipsoid that is a line of best fit for the whole planet, um, and another ellipsoid which provides a line of best fit for a certain location. So this is why if you use a, a British projection in Kentucky, it's going to look kind of weird and maybe lopsided. Um, 
<laughs> okay. So now we picked, that's the first thing we have to do, is we have to pick a reference ellipsoid. Um, then what? What's next? Puppies. So what's next? Um, no, not really. Once we've defined the reference ellipsoid, um, we have a shape on which we can place a coordinate system. A coordinate system defines locations on that surface that can be used as reference points for measurement. So imagine trying to tell someone how to get to your house without using miles, meters, or any other standardized system of measurement. Uh, you can't. Imagine trying to assess property values without the concept of acres or square footage. That would be pretty bad. A coordinate system is a way to standardize the way that we describe locations on a map. It's the common understanding that allows a person to go out into the world, measure some stuff, and know with confidence that the measurements they took will show up in the right place on any map that anyone creates with that data. And by defining a coordinate system for the data in terms of this is how I picked, this is how I measured, then anybody else can take it and say, sweet, now I know how to convert it to my measurements and make it useful for me. Um, this is uh, really apparent when um, talking about flooding. You, uh, older stream gauges will just have like a stick in the ground that say like one, two, three, with like really n not um, uh, standardized to any kind of standard sense of measurement. And then you don't really know what that means. You're like, oh, it's at a two. Uh, I don't know, is that bad? Um, so coordinate systems let us take this, th this big, 3D thing and make it into a more standardized format. Um, so there are two types of coordinate systems, geographic coordinate systems and projected coordinate systems. Um, again, up until very recently, for me, these were just like two options in a menu and I was like, that one, that's what my boss told me to use. Um, but the difference between them um, is super important because they rely on each other. So geographic coordinate systems is a combination of three different things. Um, a unit of measurement, so decimal degrees is the one that we use probably most frequently. Um, a prime meridian, you know, your zero location from which you are measuring, and a geodetic datum. And a datum is the mathematical equation that connects our reference ellipsoid to the Earth's surface. So the, the, what we're doing is we're making more and more approximations to make it easier and easier to use, but still saying this is how different it is from the world in reality. Um, the reference ellipse, yeah, and yeah, because it's not related to the Earth's surface in a regular way in each location. On the other hand, a projected coordinate system um, are different. That slide doesn't need to be there. Um, they're, they're also a grid used as a reference for locations on the planet, but they translate the three-dimensional thing, which is the geographic datum, onto a two-dimensional plane, um, like a piece of paper or a screen. Um, so the best way that um, anybody has explained this to me was to say, okay, if you have uh, the Earth and you put a light in it and it's emanating light out from the middle of the planet, um, and then you wrap a piece of paper around it. Where the light, where the, where the planet creates shadows on that piece of paper, once you unroll it, is your projection. So in a conic projection, the idea is that the paper is a cone um, or cylindrical um, and so on. So that's, that's how the, pro that's like the visualization of how a projection happens. Um, and a projected, co projected coordinate system is a mathematical representation of a projection. Again, we think about projections as what we see on the page, but um, the way that the features get on the page is through a mathematical equation that is constantly translating from the weird lumpy earth all the way to something standard. Um, well, uh, well, I don't know what that was supposed to be. Oh, there we go. Um, and this, this is the Albers conformal conic projection. Most of the time when I talk to user, when I've talked to Mapbox users in the past, they, they want to, this is the projection that they want to use because it looks really nice. Um, and, but the trick is it looks really nice when your meridian is in the middle of where your data is showing. So if you used Albers on a global map, this is what it would look like. And in Oregon where I live, it would be almost entirely sideways, which wouldn't be as useful because we like it when north is up for the most part, that's what we expect. Um, so vertical, vertical coordinate systems are a whole other level above this. Oh, that one was unintentional. Um, 
and I'm not going to get into it now, but we could talk about it for a long time. Um, so mid-talk recap, probably like, yeah, mid-talk, perfect. Um, to make maps, we need to have a common system for measurement. Um, to make that common system for measurement, we need to have a reference shape. And once we have the reference shape, we can decide on a coordinate system that's going to be best for our uses. OK, so what about web maps? How does this apply in the web map context? Wait, no, not yet. Hold on. Um, EPSG codes. Uh, before we talk about projections anymore and, and coordinate systems, I want to explain what this is. When you Google projection, you get this EPSG code. What does it mean? Um, EPSG stands for European Petroleum Survey Group. Um, they're an organization involved in best practices for surveying and applied geodesy. In 2005, EPSG was absorbed into the International Association of Oil and Gas Producers. Um, but the list of coordinate systems they maintained is still called the EPSG Geodetic Parameter Dataset. So it's just like a, in case anyone ever asks you, maybe it shows up on like Geodweeb Jeopardy tonight or something. Um, that's what EPSG stands for, and we still use that as the main defining terms for uh, coordinate systems. Okay, so what about web maps? Um, this image is from the front page of mapbox.com, and it says, uh, Beyonce wants to know where you work out. I thought that was cute. Um, because she does. Why don't you just tell her? Um, so there, when it comes to web maps, there are two coordinate systems that we think about. Uh, EPSG 4326, also known as WGS84, and EPSG 3857, also known as Web Mercator or Pseudo Mercator or Spherical Mercator. All of these things are referring to the same coordinate system. Um, and they're both used in web mapping, but in different ways. And the inspiration for this talk and the blog post that spurred this talk was um, a colleague asking, hey, a user wants to see their data in WGS84, but says that we display it in Web Mercator. How can I show it to them? And I was like, OK, let's talk about what this actually means. And then you'll understand why that question is a hard one to answer. So WGS84, the World Geodetic System of 1984, is the geographic coordinate system the 3D one, um, used by the uh, global positioning system. So it's the one you're most familiar with, probably, to express locations on the Earth. It's also the defined coordinate system for GeoJSON um, as longitude and latitude in decimal degrees. So for the most part, when you describe a longitude latitude coordinate location, it's based on this EPSG 4326 coordinate system. Um, and that's how at Mapbox and in, for most, you know, for GeoJSON and other types of data storage, this is how we store data um, and how data should be stored for web mapping and um, arguably other uses. <laughs> is it going to load? No, we'll skip it. Um, so there's no way to visualize the WGS84 coordinate system on a two dimensional plane. It doesn't exist. It doesn't, there's not enough information in that. Um, coordinate system to, to display it. So most software programs will project these coordinates onto an equal rectangular projection. Um, so looking, that looks kind of like that, um, which preserves north-south, which is nice. Um, but that's, that's typically how it's displayed. Um, but Web Mercator, or Pseudo Mercator, takes the WGS84 coordinate system and then puts it on a square. So WGS84, or Web Mercator relies on WGS84, but then like squishes it a little bit to make it awesome for computers to use. Um, but not all of the world. Uh, on the north and south, the last five degrees of the world are cut off in, a, in Web Mercator. So if you're making a map of Antarctica, probably not the projection you want to use. You may want to consider other ways to make a map. Do, 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 do. So Web Mercator was first introduced by Google, who were the web mapping pioneers in 2005, and is used in almost 100% of web maps, but it's pretty strange. Um, whoa, hold on. <laughs> oh, I ruined it. It uses the WGS84 coordinate system, which is using the WGS84 ellipsoid, but then it takes it and projects it onto another shape, onto a sphere. So um, programmatically, Two ellipsoids is annoying and frustrating for um, P 
people, but also for computers. Remember, we can infer things, computers cannot. Computers are dumb, you are smart. Don't think that computers are smarter than you because you are smarter than computers. Um, so the reason that we use Web Mercator is because it makes the map into a square. Computers really like squares. They can do binary math really quickly. Um, it's the industry standard, which is honestly reason enough for most people. Um, it preserves directionality, and it enables a global map that mostly looks good in most places where there are people. Um, my former colleague Tom um, said, technology is a result of its environment and its requirements, not any absolute value. Spherical Mercator fits the role of a simple, fast, panable, and zoomable projection like no other common projection. Um, the bad things about it are it's ugly, um, it doesn't cover the whole planet, and there is no programmatic way to represent a coordinate system that relies on two different ellipsoids. Um, and when that happens, um, software programs have to improvise, and when software programs improvise, uh, there's no way to know that there's gonna be any consistency across software programs. Um, so that is why we use Web Mercator for visualizing on computers, but not for storing data, because you don't really know what your software is gonna do with it. So how does this affect you? Um, store data in WGS84 and display it in Web Mercator. I'm gonna make this blink because this is important. Store data in WGS84 and display it in Web Mercator. That is what we've been leading up to this whole time. Um, so what does this mean for you when you're making web maps? One, if you're making a typical web map, store your data in geographic coordinates. Uh, it also creates malleability in the future because most software note that you're using for mapping and analysis knows how to reproject your data. Reprojecting from some weird, very specific projection to another weird specific projection requires more math than projecting from geographic coordinates. Um, do not store your data in Web Mercator, uh, especially if you're trying to do analysis on it. Uh, if someone says they want to see their data in WGS84, project it onto plat carré or another equal rectangular projection, and then ask them why they want to see it that way. Um, I don't, I don't have a good answer for that yet. Um, and if you're upset that you can't easily make web maps and other projections, you totally can. It's just not available through out of the box, many out of the box tools, because the standard is Web Mercator. Um, ultimately, these standards allow us to use geospatial data more deeply, and they give us a common system to communicate and build tools and grow and learn and play together in harmony. Um, and that's what we're, what we, why we make maps, right? To communicate and to work together and to collaborate. So uh, when you're upset about Web Mercator, remember that we're using it for the greater good. Um, and emojis. Um, thank you. Uh, I'm Lizzie. You can go to this place for slides, and I can take questions.